Another day, another story. Facing economic threats and violence, early Chinese immigrants banded together and created communities to survive and thrive. America's Chinatowns are often thought of as tourist destinations, whether it's to shop for good deals or to enjoy traditional Asian cuisine. But, while these communities were forged from a shared culture, their origins trace back to a dark time when Chinese immigrants were seeking protection in numbers as outsiders in the United States. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel. The emergence of Chinatowns in the United States during the 19th century is closely tied to the historical context of the time, marked by significant challenges and discrimination faced by Chinese immigrants. The mid-1800s saw a wave of Chinese immigrants arriving in the United States, particularly in response to the California gold rush and the demand for cheap labor. However, the influx of Chinese immigrants was met with hostility and racism. Many Americans, facing economic uncertainties and labor competition, viewed Chinese immigrants as a threat to their jobs and wages. This anti-Chinese sentiment was exacerbated by cultural differences, language barriers, and xenophobia. Several factors contributed to the development of Chinatowns in response to these challenges. Exclusionary laws. The Chinese faced discriminatory laws, such as the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882, which severely restricted Chinese immigration and barred Chinese laborers from entering the United States. These legal restrictions forced Chinese communities to concentrate in specific areas, creating what would later be known as Chinatowns. Segregation and discrimination. Chinese immigrants often faced segregation and discrimination in housing and employment. Many landlords refused to rent to Chinese tenants, and Chinese workers were excluded from certain industries. As a result, Chinese immigrants were compelled to live and work in their own communities. Ethnic enclaves for support. Chinatowns provided a supportive environment for Chinese immigrants, offering familiar surroundings, cultural institutions, and social networks. Within these enclaves, immigrants could find support, community, and a sense of belonging, which helped them navigate the challenges of discrimination and hostility they faced outside these areas. Economic necessity. Economic factors also played a role in the development of Chinatowns. Chinese immigrants often worked in industries such as mining, agriculture, and railroad construction, and their labor was crucial to the economic development of the West. Chinatowns served as hubs for Chinese businesses, catering to the needs of the Chinese community and fostering economic self-sufficiency. Cultural preservation. Chinatowns became important centers for preserving Chinese culture, traditions, and language in the face of assimilation pressures. These communities helped immigrants maintain their identity and pass on their cultural heritage to future generations. Despite the challenging circumstances that led to the formation of Chinatowns, these communities played a vital role in supporting Chinese immigrants and contributed significantly to the cultural diversity of American society. Over time, Chinatowns have evolved and continue to be vibrant cultural centers in many cities across the United States. The story of Chinatowns in the United States involves not only challenges and discrimination but also resilience, community building, and contributions to American society. As Chinese immigrants settled in these enclaves, they faced not only legal and social barriers but also instances of violence and prejudice. Yet, despite these hardships, Chinatowns became hubs of cultural exchange, economic activity, and community support. Economic Contributions Chinese immigrants played a crucial role in the development of the American West. They were involved in building the Transcontinental Railroad, working in mines, and contributing to various other industries. The labor of Chinese workers was often strenuous, and they faced dangerous conditions, but their contributions were instrumental in the economic expansion of the country. Cultural Institutions Within Chinatowns, immigrants established cultural institutions such as temples, community centers, and schools. These institutions served as focal points for preserving Chinese traditions, religious practices, and language. They played a vital role in maintaining a sense of identity and cohesion among the Chinese community. Social networks and mutual aid. Facing discrimination and exclusion, Chinese immigrants relied on tight-knit social networks within Chinatowns. Mutual aid societies and organizations were formed to provide support in times of need, including financial assistance, health care, and legal representation. These networks helped immigrants navigate the challenges of a new and often hostile environment. Contributions to Cuisine one of the enduring legacies of Chinatowns is the influence of Chinese cuisine on American food culture. Chinese restaurants, initially established to cater to the Chinese community, eventually gained popularity among the wider population. 
Today, Chinese cuisine is an integral part of American culinary diversity. Resistance and Advocacy Chinese immigrants and their descendants actively resisted discriminatory laws and policies. They engaged in legal battles, protests, and advocacy to challenge exclusionary practices. Despite the odds, some individuals achieved notable success, such as Wang Kim Ark, whose legal victory in 1898 affirmed birthright citizenship for Chinese Americans. Evolving Communities Over the years, Chinatowns have evolved. While some have faced challenges such as gentrification, rising property prices, and changes in demographics, they remain important cultural and commercial centers. Chinatowns continue to attract visitors with their vibrant street markets, cultural festivals, and a rich tapestry of traditions. In Search of Gold Mountain When gold was discovered in California in 1848, the Chinese, particularly from the Guangdong province's Pearl River Delta, started to immigrate en masse, lured by the image of a Gam San, or Gold Mountain, waiting for them in America. But instead of finding quick fortunes, the immigrants, who were mostly married men who had left their spouses behind, faced a tough reality. Life in the gold mines was harsh, made harsher by white Americans' attempts to edge the Chinese out. We know from the historical records that there was tremendous anti-Chinese hostility, says Vivian Liu, director of Hunter College's Asian American Studies Program and Center. For example, in 1850, the California legislature passed a foreign miners tax targeting Chinese immigrants that required workers who were not U.S. citizens to pay tax every month for the right to mine. Louis adds that guidebooks of the era included advice to Chinese men on how to deal with violence. As gold supplies waned, the immigrants moved on to other businesses, like working on the Transcontinental Railroad, but they were often tasked with more dangerous jobs and lower wages. In 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act was passed, halting Chinese immigration for 10 years and barring those already in the U.S. from becoming citizens. They had no other place to go in a very hostile country at that time, says James S. Lai of Santa Clara University's Ethnic Studies Department. Chinatowns as protective zones Many of those who decided to stay had been contract workers on the railroad, which was completed by 1869. They had to figure out where to live to create new livelihood and the only way they could do it was to create mono-ethnic Chinatowns, Lai says. One destination was San Francisco, home to the country's oldest Chinatown dating back to the 1850s, and other California cities, like San Jose and Los Angeles. Chinatowns also started forming in places like New York City, Seattle, Boston and Washington, D.C., often in the inner city areas where land wasn't ideal. As they were pushed out of more coveted labor markets, like agriculture, mining, transportation and manufacturing, Chinese immigrants took on jobs in restaurants and laundromats. Some were able to thrive as small business owners, while others focused on finding jobs as workers to send money back home to China. Lai notes that by about 1870, there were about 300 laundromats in San Francisco, employing nearly 3,000 employees. Violence peaks during Yellow Peril era. Despite the protections offered by Chinatowns, immigrants faced intensifying discrimination during the period known as the Yellow Peril in the late 1800s. Sometimes this took the form of official policies. In San Francisco, goods coming out of the neighborhood had to be labeled as Chinatown products, and upwards of 30 ordinances were passed just targeting Chinese laundromats. One ordinance in the 1880s required every laundry business to obtain a permit from the Board of Supervisors, yet Chinese shop owners were regularly refused permits. Eventually the Supreme Court struck it down, citing the discriminatory effects of the law. Beyond policies, violence broke out against Chinatown residents around the country. The violence was largely condoned, Lai says, to try to get them out of the country because they were seen as a moral and economic threat. In Denver, an 1880 anti-Chinese riot led to the erasure of the community. In 1906, firefighters torched the Chinatown in California's Santa Ana after one man in the community was reported to have leprosy. After banning Chinese from walking on the streets after dark in Antioch, white residents burned down its Chinatown. San Jose was once home to five Chinatowns. After the first four were burned down, an Irish immigrant, John Heinlein, allowed the community to live on his private land in an area called Heinleinville. But city officials eventually used eminent domain to seize the land and bulldozed it completely. Changing laws allow Chinatown populations to diversify. Despite the violence, many Chinatowns survived. And when the Exclusion Act was repealed in 1943, followed by the War Brides Act in 1945, 
the communities that had been dominated by men started to shift. This allowed the wives of Chinese-American veterans to come into the United States, Louis says. So you see that the gender balance begins to even out, and begin to see the development of families in these Chinatowns, and that's so key. By the time the Immigration and Naturalization Act of 1965 was enacted, Chinatowns had transformed into multi-generational communities. Poor housing and social services in the Chinatowns eventually spurred Chinese-American families to move to the suburbs, most notably to California's Monterey Park, which became a major suburban Asian enclave. In San Francisco, more Chinatowns sprung up, including ones in the Sunset and Richmond districts. By the 2020s, following a spate of anti-Asian incidents during the COVID-19 pandemic, cities started to reckon with their histories. In 2021, Antioch, California offered an official apology for the destruction of its Chinatown in 1876 and designated the site as a historic district. Later that year, the city of San Jose formally apologized for the burning down of its largest Chinatown in 1872, taking responsibility for playing a role in systemic and institutional racism, xenophobia, and discrimination. In 2022, Santa Ana apologized for the 1906 torching of its Chinatown, and Denver removed an anti-Chinese plaque that had marked the 1880 destruction of its Chinatown. Folks really became protective of the Chinatowns, Louis says, adding that the neighborhoods continue to serve in their original role, as enclaves where Chinese immigrants can establish themselves, support each other and thrive. In the face of adversity, the story of Chinatowns is one of resilience, determination, and the enduring pursuit of the American dream. The communities that emerged in response to discrimination have not only survived but thrived, contributing significantly to the cultural mosaic that defines the United States. Today, Chinatowns stand as reminders of the struggles and triumphs of the Chinese American experience. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.